guys, Kevin here. Uh, what you're seeing now is just a little tour of the setup in my dorm room that I had a few days ago. It's different now because I've actually moved my big G Max out of my room and into our maker space uh, on campus here. Just because a lot of the long prints on that I don't want to be printing overnight while I'm trying to sleep in there, so I, I moved it to the maker space for now. But uh, there's my Electron Mix G3. Here's the G Max that you're looking at. And what I really want to cover in this video is some of the things that I had to go through to build the printer, some of the difficulties I ran through, so hopefully you guys can avoid those. So this is the, the G-Max printing in the makerspace right now. It's printing the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, so one of the first things uh, that, I had to, that I ran into at the build was I had to, to tap the holes on the ends of the aluminum extrusion. So here you see I had to drill a hole through one of them and actually drill, drill and tap on the other end so that way I could put a thread in there so I could bolt them together like it shows in the G-Max build manual. So you have to do that for the bottom, bottom two, and then, or excuse me, all four on the bottom, and then that top bar as well. If you want to avoid this, you can use those L brackets that are shown in the back of there. You could do that on all four corners and on the top if you wanted to not have to worry about that, but those are expensive. It's much cheaper to do it this way. Um, so what you can see here, this is actually the bed design that I came up with. Uh, very simple design. I'm actually going to be replacing it very soon just because it's not the greatest design, it's not the most sturdy, and it's it's not the levelest for sure. <laughs> so I ended up actually buying a, a G-Create aluminum bed. Uh, there's the board that I'm currently using. It's an MKS base version 1.4. Right now I have a fan just sitting on top of it cooling down the stepper drivers. Uh, and you can see what I'm pointing to right now is the port D11, that's where I actually have the BL touch sensor plugged in, and then right above that in the Z min end stop is where the other part of the sensor goes. But right now I'm just running the, the single extruder, don't have any other loads on it other than the actual stepper motors, um, and so far it's been working out pretty, pretty great. Uh, just your standard power supply as well, um, 12 volts, 30 amps I believe, and I'm just using a, a discount RepRap uh, five dollar smart controller. So that blue piece of tape there is just because my extruder fan is cheap Chinese fan and is very noisy and that helps reduce some of the noise. Um, but that's a little custom mount as well that I made for the BL touch sensor. Um, and then the belts are just kind of zip tied on there uh, to keep the tension on them and it, it works pretty well. And you see I had to modify the x-axis brackets I actually added the brass insert there so I could put these eight millimeter lead screws in and I did it on on both sides obviously basically just went into Autodesk Fusion 360 and modified the top bracket there so I could install those um, and that wasn't too big of a deal for me I'm very experienced with SolidWorks so it wasn't too bad um, picking that up so building the printer wasn't actually that difficult to do. It just took a large amount of time having to square off and cut the ends of the aluminum extrusion, make sure everything was nice and straight. Uh, the thing that really took the most time for me was getting the programming right and just getting the initial settings dialed in. So you can see kind of some of the pictures here of just how a mess my room was with all of the parts laid out and me putting everything together. It ended up taking me approximately, I'd say a total of two, two days to build the actual physical printer uh, and then several more to get it fully programmed because I ran into a few problems. So the first problem I ended up running into was I was way over extruding so there's a short clip here um, and that was just a matter of changing the steps per millimeter on my extruder motor um, so that was a relatively simple fix and then I ran into this weird problem where my BL touch sensor was not working for the bed leveling but it was working for the auto homing. So long story short, I spent probably a good 15 plus hours trying to figure out why this was. Um, stepped through everything, went through all the firmware, double checked everything. And what it ended up being was actually a loose connection on a servo extension that I had on that wire loom that is leading from the extruder back to the board. So first things first, always check your mechanical linkages and electrical connections first before you go to software. Um, I was a little suspicious that it was software just because it was repeatable to a certain extent. Um, 
However, then it started to degrade with time, which led me to believe that it was more of a mechanical issue. So I went back and checked my wiring connections, and that is where I actually ended up finding um, the problem. And after I fixed that, um, the the bed leveling worked fine. Um, and then you you'll notice the the blue painters tape that I have on the bed. The reason I have that there is because I learned another thing throughout this process is that auto bed leveling can only actually correct for up to one millimeter of deflection in your bed. So my bed was significantly more than that as I found just looking at the values that my BL touch sensor was getting. So I used the blue painters tape on the bed just to get it level for now before I get the new aluminum bed from G Create. So currently I'm using the Marlin RC5 firmware. It took me many many tries to get it working properly but what you see here is what I'm actually using on my final pre-built on my final printer. Um, so I'm using an MKS base version 1.4 so this actually uses the Ramps 1.4 firmware. Just throwing in custom name. I have one extruder, one power supply, uh, just the basic thermo thermistor. Um, didn't change any of these settings. Get down to the end stops. I had to uh, change some of the end stop inverting, basically whether or not the signal um, was actually true or false for whether or not the end stop was hit. And it's important to make sure that your Z-min end stop was false and your Z-min probe is also false for the BL touch sensor. So I made sure to change those. And then right here, you define the Z-min probe uses the Z-min end stop pin. That basically says that instead of having a minimum end stop, and a probe as two separate items. You're using your probe as your end stop as well. Haven't changed anything in here. This is where you define the size of your machine. I'm only actually getting 320 millimeters out of my Y axis because of my bed design currently. So that will be solved once the G Create Lumina bed gets here. Uh, it's simple nut running into the frame that can just be adjusted in the future once I get that Lumina bed and I won't have that problem don't need to do anything here and then here's where we actually enable the auto bed leveling and so you're just gonna wanna comment this out it'll start out with two lines like this and then you're just gonna delete those and that's how you get the auto bed leveling feature um, this line here I added because of someone on the forums I don't really think it makes a difference after my testing but that was when I was troubleshooting my BL touch sensor not working correctly so I use the auto bed leveling grid just because it gives you more points and I think it's a better way to get more accurate first layer heights. So these are my my grid that I'm doing across the bed and I'm doing four points just so I can get a good enough number of values so it's accurate as possible so I can get a good first layer down. This is where you set up your offsets for the probe from the extruder. This is the locations of mine and this chart helps you align that very easily and this is where you set up pretty much all of the important settings for your printer so that default axis steps per unit is where I had way too high of an extrusion rate for my extruder and that was why on my first print as you saw before it was way over extruding so I just had to adjust that to the correct number um, right here after some playing around. So this is the X, Y, your Z, and then your extruder. And then this is your max feed rates. I um, also had to make sure to lower that because I believe the, the Z was very, very high and it should not have been. So change that. Acceleration values, I don't believe I changed any of those. These I actually slowed down some of them just because it's a bigger printer. I slowed down the XY jerk. Um, basically what that is is how much the printer can move instantaneously it, in its firmware, what it believes it can do. There's obviously a limit that. I lower that just because that way there's less guesswork and judgment in whether the printer will actually be able to achieve that. And it might add you know, a little bit more time because it has to accelerate for that little bit longer distance versus moving you know, in, in a jump state almost instantaneously. You want to define the EP, uh, EEPROM settings. Basically that allows you to adjust your offset 
in your LCD display and then save it to your memory if you want to do that so that way it will remember what you're doing this is set up just for my RepRap five, uh, five dollar discount smart controller I added these two lines per Thomas Sandliner's video and that makes sure that the direction of the knob is right and I get the right number of steps when I'm turning it and here's where all of my problems lie um, this was the biggest problem I had to overcome was this line right here so in every code that I've seen on the internet and every one that someone shared with me when they define their number of servos they've defined the number of servos as three and I know I'm not using three servos but I was just trying to copy what everyone else was doing online so I put three in and no matter what every time I would go to run the x-axis it would make this horrible screeching noise and it would not move for the life of it. And this took me many, many hours to finally figure out what line of code it was. I tried different Marlin firmwares. I tried using a bunch of different things that none ended up working until I changed this to num servos of one. And that ended up making everything work beautifully. So I think what's actually happening here is that when you define the number of servos as three, somehow one of the pins or several of the pins in the x-axis stepper motor plug get rearranged and they are now believed to be servos in the software which is obviously incorrect because they're stepper motors so it makes your stepper motor freak out because it thinks it's a servo so it's not getting the right voltages or the correct commands and they're trying to mix and match basically um, different sections of code and commands that just do not work so if you're doing this, I re recommend you start with one because if you're using a BL touch sensor and that's it, you're only going to need to do it as one. And then you just need to add these two lines here for the BL touch sensor. Um, these two are not necessary. They can be zero for all four of those numbers. Uh, but I've just left those because I was trying to troubleshoot why the sensor is not working. And that was ended up being the mechanical issue with the servo extension becoming unplugged. Uh, and then I haven't touched anything else, and that's pretty much it for my firmware.